It's me with a different hat on. Yeah, I was going to say, but you've got a different address. <laughs> They very conveniently uh, gave me a slot end to end, so um, we didn't have to come But how twice, did you end you. up with a different address? Because I actually looked to see if you were the same person, but you had a different address. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes, well, one is the work address, yes. Oh, I see. OK. <laughs> OK. And my, my colleague, who should be here, had to go to a funeral, and I think the wake must be finding be more exciting than uh, this is. So, uh, he hasn't showed. I intend, um, I intend to have one of those. <laughs> Um, I'm not even having a funeral, I'm just going to have a wake. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was going to be able to say that both of us are the products of, of the 1950s apprenticeship scheme in the Botanic Gardens and that this gives us um, a full right to be uh, curmudgeons and uh, be able to say uh, things ain't what they used to be. And, um, well, they're not, but there's so much that is the same as what they used to be that there really is really little in the gardens that wasn't the same, isn't the same as it was when we were there like 60 years ago. And I mean, the beautiful structure of the gardens uh, is unchanged and it neither should be changed. Uh, the, the trees and the spaces are um, wonderful assets to have. And uh, But in the current um, master gardens master plan, there's a, a quite a number of very uh, visionary and aspirational uh, projects that uh, the late David Given had put into that plan. And of course, uh, because they're all capital items, they don't show up in this long-term plan. And I can understand that given the constraints that we've got. But um, we recently, as is actually one of the things that's in the master plan, is that uh, a, a trust should be formed. And um, it was really up to the friends to do that, and which that we have done. And we have recruited some very fine, energetic uh, business people, none of whom were, see themselves as being the, you know, in the friends group. But they're all business and professional people who, who see the gardens as a wonderful city asset and that they would really like to take it further into, into the the next stage based on that uh, master plan. Um, in fact, uh, when we were forming it, we, we hit everybody we asked wanted to be on board until we, we had a meeting one day and we looked around and we thought, we've got nine here and we need only eight. And the deeds only calls for eight. So we thought, hang on, we haven't registered the deed yet, so um, we can quickly change it to 10. And so we can accommodate um, all the people who wanted to come on board. Uh, and and that's, that's great. The problem we have, I have, because I was responsible for really recruiting most of these people, is that while we're busy getting the infrastructure sorted out and getting charitable status and all that stuff, we've rapidly come to the point where they're going to say, well, what are we going to start raising money for? And frankly, the Botanic Gardens is not ready for us. <coughs> In fact, this has been galloping up for the last eight years since we've been talking about forming a trust. Um, but there's no projects that we can go to the public, go to the big donors that we hope to tap and say, this is what we want to do. So I have a problem with the decision-making processes that seem to be in place. They don't seem to be in place in the gardens and their capacity to make decisions and to um, be able to present us with uh, viable options to raise money on. Except one, um, that is the, the pedestrian bridge, which I see as in your long-term plan, but as an unfunded item. Uh, we could do that, and we've suggested to the council that we, or the, the, the garden staff, that we do that. But we meet with a certain amount of, um, well, not exactly a brick wall, something more like a wet blanket, um, saying that you know we have to get resource consent because well, we how don't. Much, how much is on the budget for that, even though it's unfunded? Um, how much would it cost? Something like three hundred thousand, possibly more like five hundred thousand. But you'd fundraise for well, the whole yes, amount. But, uh, we haven't fund. We haven't started fundraising yet, but we need the but vision to start fundraising with. And, um, and to launch the trust, in fact. You know, I, mean, right. I know we've got a, an MOU to sign with you someday, and we have to have a little party with that, but that's not when we want to launch it to the public until we've got a, 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 a need for it. Yeah. Um, 
the, um, the reality is that the trust does not want to get in the position of actually commissioning designs or holding contracts or making design decisions. Our role is to say, there's a project, we will try to raise the money for it. And um, so this is where we have, um, where we need the council to step up and say, yes, we're prepared to commission the design and we're prepared to get the resource consent and we will we'll hold the contract and we hopefully be able to say, well, we will All provide right. the money. So we're not asking for money, but we do ask, I guess we do need something. If, the, if there's a design needed within the council, it costs money to hire their own landscape architects um, to, to get these projects into a real, reality state. The, 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 I mean, this is amazing because, I mean, you're coming here to say that you want to fundraise for projects that we need done and haven't got money on our budget for. This is awesome. Yeah, and, I mean, on, yeah. and because it's awesome, oh, yeah. I'm going to invite Vicky back to ask you a well, question. That's, that's the whole concept. We get, <laughs> our MOU requires us uh, that we only um, raise money for capital projects. Right. And capital projects take... Decisions, need yeah. decisions to say this is what we want to do. Okay. Alan, the children's garden that you mentioned here, which sounds lovely, um, how much is it? Do you have any concept of what it costs? No idea. Is it, do you know where it goes or do you, is there anything inside your head that tells about children's garden? Well, it's, it's going to go in the area where the, the, um, <coughs> the playground is yeah. and that's adjacent to where, where the Gondwana garden is. I have a problem with sort of all these these different titles. Uh, I mean, I think we should start from scratch and have a whole children's experience. Cool. Not play, not learning, cool. but it's Absolutely. a whole play could be a learning thing. experience. Yeah. And and I think that we've got so many wonderful uh, features in our um, both our. Okay, so if you wanted to create this amazing children's experience in the Botanic Gardens, which is an already amazing place for children and others, yes. what kind of number, if you were thinking of one randomly, um, would you need to have and what sort of funding would you need from the council in order to create that? Actually, I see that there's a figure in the budget um, for maintenance of the, the playground, something like 2.6 million or something. Is there? It's, it's, it's ridiculously huge, but it's a wonderful, wonderful figure that if you can get away from some, you know, the concept of using it to fix the pay, the, the soft surface or something. That we might do something, something more... Is it a renewal of the playground? Hmm? Yeah. OK, but if, if you were going to start this project of something amazing for children in the Botanic Gardens near the playground and you're going to have a whole heap of ideas, what's a reasonable figure for us to think about putting onto that? Oh, well, if the one in town's costing 12 million, I think we could do a wonderful job with 3 million. 3 million for... Uh, we, <laughs> well, no, 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 no. He's, look, he, it's a bit okay, unfair. Right. It is a bit But unfair, you're talking yeah. about an MOU between the council and the friends of the Botanic Garden, yes. are you? Right. So uh, do you think that a, a proper... Um, you know, discussion around the, 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 the projects that the friends could be fundraising for and actively involved in delivering would be best dealt with in that environment. Yeah, we could. We'll do it at the party when we sign the um, MOU for that because we'll have all the trustees there. Yep. Tim. If I understand you right, so it's kind of like the opposite to what Vicky was saying. You, you, you've, you've identified a, a fantastic opportunity. If the gardens put it to the project together as in the concept and work out the finance, friends of the Botanic Gardens will then take, will take the muzzle off and you'll go off and try and find the funds. Is that correct? That's it. Exactly. So it's the opposite. So we sh yeah. we're not asking... You're not asking us for money. We're saying... No. Or the, the Botanic Gardens staff will say, hey, here's the concept... This is probably what we need, and you go and find it. Yep. Fantastic. This is the this yeah. is a great submission. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. No, thank, thank you very much. Sure. And we've got one more submission for the evening.